So we're going to try to uh, get the RAM board to work. I've been uh, looking at it and uh, found that the um, right signal uh, I had routed incorrectly and had grounded it. <laughs> so I had to uh, cut and uh, cut that uh, pin on the IC and uh, bring it out on a bodge wire. So we'll have to fix that on the next revision. But uh, it does seem to work. So this one's going to be a bit confusing to understand. Remember that there's a latch. This is a D flip-flop latch. And you give the address of the RAM that you want to write to. So you, you put the address on the bus and you clock that into the uh, buffer. Now that RAM appears to the chip. Then you can send data. You can write the data into the RAM or you can read the data from the RAM. Okay latch you can only write into. So there's three control signals address write, RAM write, and RAM read. Okay? So let me zoom out a bit. We're going to use some of the functions on this nice uh, machine I have here. Uh, the address write, I'm going to use uh, this uh, function. So this is a momentary switch. You, I know it's black on black, you can't see it. But there's a momentary switch that pulses this high, and that will write uh, contents of the bus into the RAM address. Then there are these two, which are momentary switches, and they are set to be normally high, and then you can clock them low. So one of them will be a read pulse, and one of them will be a write pulse. So that's how we're going to do that. All right? Then uh, we're going to examine or monitor the um, the bus with our indicator. All right, so there we go. It's powered up. You can ignore this little. Uh, I'll turn it off. Ignore that LED over there. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to first put something uh, on the bus, and right now it's all set to zero. So zero is fine for the bus. I have a pull down resistor and everything. So we have zero in here. I'm going to pulse the address right. So now the octal flip flop will have all zeros in it. So we're going to be looking at address zero on the RAM chip. Let's put some data into the bus so we know what's going on. We'll put a, uh, we'll say a bit zero, one, two, bit two, we'll put high. Now we're going to write that into the chip. So we're going to have to pulse the right. That's this, we'll pulse this. So we probably successfully transferred that value into the RAM chip. We can read that back out by hitting the read. And there we go. So um, we can put a different value at a different address. So um, let's try to go to address 1. Okay, so here's 1. That was address zero. This is one. So we're going to clock that in. So now the octal flip plot is set to address one. If we do a read um, on address one, oh, there's some random data in there. Okay, so random data in one. And then if we clock back to address zero, there's the zero there now, so we can clock that into the flip-flops. Now if we do a read, we have the old uh, value again. So there we go. We've successfully written, well, successfully written and written, written and read from the RAM chip. Uh, did have, have the bodge wire, but um, so I think we're good to go with the, uh, uh, with the RAM chip. Uh, I think the program counter works, the RAM works, uh, the uh, registers work. Um, I've ordered a bunch of parts. I've ordered uh, some, I have these uh, female sockets so I can uh, like plug uh, plug uh, these together. Is that in focus? Uh, um, plug these together like that. Um, but we might want to piggyback other boards and so I've ordered some sockets that have long pins on them so we can both plug another board on and then have a female connector on top of that so we can stack these things up.
It's the same connector that's used on the Arduino shields, so they're easy to get on eBay and cheap. Uh, the ten, this is the 10-bit version. I've done a couple other things. Like I said, I've ordered the ALU boards, uh, so we should be getting those soon. And I've actually uh, ordered uh, the strip boards, uh, the really crude one-sided strip boards. Those are in the mail somewhere. So they take forever to get from China to here. Um, I did uh, go ahead and design my own motherboard. Um, I designed a 10-pin motherboard, uh, a 10-inch long uh, motherboard. Um, and I have that out being fabricated. Um, so that's one of the most expensive boards I've ever built. Uh, I think those ended up costing me around three and a half dollars per board. Um, but they are 10 inches long. And uh, yeah, but anyway, we'll be able to build a whole computer uh, either on one of those boards or maybe have to put two of those boards together. But that should be great.